they hope to be. But yet they've got a lot of basketball yet to play. And I think this Virginia Tech team is very, very capable. Everybody remembers what they did last year. Sure. And so they're really well coached and they're really excited about getting ready to get to the tournament. Final game of the night in the ACC. We just saw Virginia topple Clemson in Charlottesville. Opening tap control by the home team. The cards in red tonight once again. L. Ellis has it. And Louisville goes to work. Four wins on this season. The upset against Clemson two weeks ago. Perhaps the highlight up to this point. Curry outside to Ellis. Nine to shoot. Ellis the fade away. And he's short the rebound by Padula. Sean Padula. In the starting five again, Hunter Couture, MJ Collins, Justin Mutz, so dynamic operating in that high post area, leads the Hokies in assists. Grant Basile, who we told you about, almost 22 per in the last 10. Padula in traffic, no, and the rebound controlled by Jalen Withers. One of the things Louisville has really done to help themselves is cut down on the turnover. They've been able to execute their half court offense a lot more efficiently. I think Ellis has gotten better in that department too over the course of this season. Yeah, I think early he tried to do too much, and now he's understanding what he can and can't do. Trainer off the mark, put back up and in for Sidney Curry. Curry is a big, strong guy in underneath, and they're really going to try to hurt Virginia Tech on the glass. They think they can have some success against them with their offensive rebound. Had the double-double in their previous meeting. Good cut by Justin Mutz, and we're done. One of the things this Virginia Tech team does because of Mike Young, they isolate guys, and they put guys in situations off of their offensive execution to get easy looks. Saw the number there. Mutz just six boards away from 1,000 in his career. Withers lost the handle. Two on one. Couture, fancy bounce pass. The layup's good by Padula. Padula and Couture seem like they were connected from birth. <laughs> they really play well together. They play off of each other extremely well. They both are extremely tough, competitive guards. I think if you're head coach Mike Young, you would love to have Couture back for those four games that he missed where Tech really struggled. And that certainly has been a consistent theme this year, just trying to find consistency in the backcourt. And again, maybe if you reach full strength in the health department in Greensboro, you know, Tech could be that surprise team. Trainer, no. Curry tracks it down, turns it over. And an open look, wide open, Padula, short. Well, I will say, this is my first look at Louisville this year, Coach. We were at shoot-around and practice, and the energy with this team is really good. Despite the record, Curry connects down low. Well, one of the things they've done as the season progressed is they've gotten the ball in the hands of guys where they can make plays. I thought earlier in the season they operated too far away from the basket and tried to make individual plays instead of letting the system get them better shots. Quick spin by Mutz outside. Like James No. Check it, that was Collins. Ellis avoids the trap. It does say something, though, about Kenny Payne. You talk to him, he's smiling. He's not worried about himself. He's worried about his team. You look at the team in practice and in shoot-arounds, high energy, listening, being coachable. I think there's a lot of boxes checked behind the scenes that fans don't realize. Well, first of all, Kenny Payne's a winner. Sure. I mean, every place he's been, he's won. He's coached under John Calipari. He was picked up by the New York Knicks, the, the coach there. So he understands, and he comes with a confidence level that he's got his team to understand it's not about him, it's about them. It's about their growth and development, and they're starting to understand that better. Has somehow got the trainer. The easy flush, cards back in front. Well, again, what they're trying to do is go inside on this Virginia Tech team. They think they're a little soft there, and they think that their strength and low post play can be an advantage. Couture high off the glass, spins it home. Couture is awful tough. This Virginia Tech team, and this is why missing Couture hurt, is executes off of continuity executes off of skill sets and so when a piece is missing it throws a lot of things off 
and now getting him back to back in the flow. Ellis from the logo, not this time. We're tied at six at the first media timeout. Oh, JJ Trainer coming right into your living room. The pass somehow got there. The easy bucket. Clark Roy, Phil Pye courtside. Be with you for the next two hours. All eyes on Greensboro next week for the start of the ACC tournament. And an interesting start here so far tonight. Mike Young, year number four in Blacksburg after a stellar career at Wofford. Upstate South Carolina, Kenny Payne, of course, year number one. Won a national championship here in Louisville back in 86 as a player and a longtime assistant coach at Kentucky. You mentioned coach for the Knicks. I talked with him today. I said, look, I want to know about the seasons. First time I've had a chance to sit down with Coach Payne. It's like, you know, it's not about me. It's about these players. It's about growing these players up, making sure that they make the right decisions as they grow up in life. And I said, I hear you. I understand that. But I want to know who you've leaned on this year when things have, have gotten tough. And I mean, he's got a Rolodex coach. He first name out of his mouth was Coach Cal, of course, at Arch Rival Kentucky. We got Larry Brown, and he went through a whole laundry list of names of people that have reached out that have offered, you know, their assistance or just an ear, perhaps. At Everybody times. that's ever met Kenny Payne likes Kenny Payne. Yes. There's nobody in this business that doesn't respect KP. So that's natural. But Mike Young was exactly the same way. Being in South Carolina, having an understanding of what he did at Walford is tremendous. Uh, great coach, better human being. Mike James off the mark. Hokies get it back. Here's Padula off the bounce. Bottled up, somehow gets a shot away. Mutz gives him a fresh 20. Bazzilli short. And it goes back to the cards. Part of this Virginia Tech DNA is their ability to shoot the basketball. When they're not shooting the ball well, then they get, sometimes they get in trouble because they try to over penetrate. They try to create a little too much off the dribble as opposed to letting their system, by their system I mean their staggers, their pin downs, their curls, get them good shots. Here's Kamari lands his first touch and a basket for the mid range. He is playing extremely well. He's picked up his play from the beginning of the year till now. They've been able to go to him on some isolation type of situations, and he's really delivered. Tell you what I love. It's not sexy, but he shoots 94% from the free throw line, basically leads the country in terms of first-year players. That tells you and shows you he's a great shooter, a very bright future. Silly with position swatted away by Ellis out of bounds. Well, Kenny Payne told L. Ellis this morning at shoot around, you have to play the best offensive game of the season tonight. We need you to do it working against Padula, working against Hunter Couture. Yeah, these two guards are tough, competitive guards, and they're really smart, and they'll take advantage of mistakes. So what he was telling Ellis was you got to mentally stay in the game. Not easy to do with all the cuts. Inside the Lynn Kidd. And that's what I'm talking about. That's Virginia Tech basketball at its best. Getting baskets off of assists, getting baskets off of movement. Ellis over to James. And the runner, not this time. Huntley Hatfield to rouse it, a fresh 20. James an open look, that's a three. Trader. There's Ellis open for a minute. Boy, three opportunities, Louisville comes up empty. Virginia Tech has to do a better job on blocking out and keeping Louisville off the offensive glass. Coach, give me your mentality. Final day of February, you've been a part of Final Four teams. You know what it takes to get there. As teams start to eye conference tournaments, how do things start to shift in how you go about practice and how you go about your business and trying to make sure we're best positioned to make a deep run. Well, you shorten practice because physically you should have a lot of the stuff in. It becomes more mental and guys understanding their roles. At this point, they should know what works and what does not work through through experiences. And so you just really emphasize that a lot more film work, a lot more walkthrough, getting them mentally tied in to what we can do and what we can. Foul was called on Huntley Hatfield. That's his first. I believe that's the first foul that we've had called in this game tonight. Almost eight minutes in. When's the last time you saw that coach? <laughs> well, this is a good officiating crew. And the thing I say about officiating crews, good officiating crews understand the difference between activity and fouls. 
Well, it's amazing how much uh, former coaches now in the broadcasting realm appreciate veteran officiating crews like what we just heard from one Mr. Perry Clark. 10 to 8, Virginia Tech out in front of Louisville, nine minutes in almost. Dallas and uh, LeBradford Smith, I mean, Jerry Eves, it goes on and on and on. And probably would have got another one if Wade Houston hadn't taken his son to Tennessee with him. Allen Houston, he turned out to be a pretty good player, too. He was pretty special. <laughs> out of the timeout, 10 to 8, Tech leading Louisville. And it goes back to the Hokies. Perry Clark, Roy Philpott here at the Yum Center on a Tuesday night, the regular season winding down. How about this? The final day of February today. I, I'm not sure what happened to the first two months of 2023. It's gone by quick. It's gone by awful quick, but the fun is about to really start now. That's right. We get you in Champ Week coming up next week. That countdown is on. ACC tournament in Greensboro coming up next week. Everybody trying to get the elusive double by at the top. And a foul called as Mutz tried to attack the left side. You mentioned the officials tonight, Lee Cassell, Bill Covington Jr., A.J. Desai, leading this veteran ACC crew. Jalen Withers picks up his first person. But I tell you, that's where Mutz really, I think, operates extremely well on the elbows. Why he operates so well on the elbows is because he can pass, he can shoot from there, and he can create scoring opportunity. When you get the ball in that slot area, you can't get any help from the corner where he has the ball now. If you get help from the corner, you got a shooter there. So he one on one, see him there, he gets to the rim. So that's a very effective area for him to operate. Now when Couture was out, you didn't have that shooter in the corner so they could jam him and he wasn't able to dribble drive as well as he can right now. Showed you the quickness there, and then Trainer recovered for the block that went off of Mutz out of bounds. Cards get it back down to. Louisville's trying to play everything inside the paint. If you notice, most of their shots are inside the paint, which forces Virginia Tech defensively to collapse, and they don't get as many runouts. Here's Kidd inside, a nice move, but back out. Space for Padula, whips it across, and that's a three. And Rodney Rice now is playing in game number four. For Virginia Tech fans, that's a welcome sight. He's a very talented basketball player. I coached his dad, I've uh, seen him grow up. He is as advertised. When he gets some reps and get his sea legs under him, he's going to be a really great player for Virginia Tech. Hey, he had the ankle injury. Surgery back in August. He comes back, then he breaks his pinky finger mid January in practice, miss about five and a half weeks as a result. We saw him on the floor against Duke, had a couple of threes. That was impressive. Inside Kid, no. And a good box out by Trainer. See, I think when they throw it inside, they got to give Kid some action so he has some options of where else to throw the ball. Mutz comes away with it, and ahead to Rice. It was fouled. Rodney Rice to the strike, two or three this season. And you can tell how much confidence they have in Rice. He's, this is only his fourth game coming back to play. A lot of guys with red shirt, but they feel that his best basketball is ahead of him. With this mixture with Couture um, and the rest of the guys on the team, he really can get better and improve himself. Freshman out of Maryland, one more coming for Rice. And we remind you, the Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament starts tomorrow. Greensboro Coliseum. Every matchup of the championship games right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Our first round coverage starts at 1230 Eastern with the nothing but net crew. And if you're a Virginia Tech fan watching tonight, I would encourage you to watch this week. Women's side, Kenny Brooks done a remarkable job with Elizabeth Kitley, Georgia Amore, and I think the team that's going to win the ACC championship. We will uh -oh, see. You make your predictions. That's my bold huh? prediction you right now. Predictions. Health of Olivia Miles, the standout point guard for Notre Dame, front and center in everybody's mind right now. See if she can play. And a foul call on a nifty move by Kamari Lands. You mentioned you love 22 in red and his potential. Yeah, I, he's he's got an active body. His skill set is good. He puts the ball on the floor well, and then he can elevate and go get his shot. He's a very talented basketball player. 94% at the line this year. You know, Pretty some guys just walk in the gym and they just, 
after you've done it for long enough, you can just say, okay, he can play. You know, his poise and the way he carries himself, he's a good player. Now, you were an assistant at South Carolina, and I forget the name of the player, but one of your guys about six, seven years ago shot around this same clip, and he had made like 70 in a row at one point in time. And I mentioned it, and sure enough, he missed two free throws in the game I called, and we just saw Kamari Lands. My question is, did we win or lose the game so I know whether or not we can be <laughs> friends the rest of the night? I think you won. All I right. think you won. Rice left open for a minute. Boy, the leg kicked out. And a foul called on the three-point shot. You know, I think that's a very effective move. That coming over the screen and then, then refusing it and then fading on it. And again, when you work around the elbows, it just gives you better floor spacing and the ability to do more offensively. I think L. Ellis thought the same thing that I did. As he came down, that leg kicked out. Uh, no, nah, that's a legit. That, that, that's, he's got to come down. I right. Mean, that, that's you got to give him space to come down. Sure. One more coming for Rodney Rice. You know, one of the things that I think is hard is to get yourself in sync when you've been sitting out and get your rhythm. And, and it's different than playing in practice and playing real games in front of people real time. I, I think you got to get your timing back, your continuity, and I just think that takes some time. 8 nothing run for the Hokies over the last four plus minutes. Both teams struggling from the floor. Here's Mike James, left-handed finish high off the glass. It's obvious what Louisville is trying to do. They're trying to drive the ball and finish everything at the rim and put pressure on Virginia Tech to keep them out of the paint. Zilly still without a point. Leading score for the Hokies. Rice, that's a three, no. Lance has it. Ellis is doing a really good job of getting Louisville into their offensive sets. Mentioned that first game earlier tonight, Virginia beating Clemson. That's a foul as Poteet picks up his first. Yeah, and again, I mean, this is where I think Louisville has grown. Instead of settling for three, they're looking, you see James, he's attacking, using his body, his athleticism, and putting a lot of pressure on the defense. And when they do that, then they don't turn it over. And when they do that, they get higher percentage shots. When they do that, they get to the foul line. So it's a lot of good things that happen. And last foul on Couture, who prevented the pass from being caught. Under eight to go in our first half. Only Hatfield, the spin. Padula has it for the Hokies. Virginia Tech has not gotten any or not many easy looks. How about that one for Bazilli. Splashes it on. Because that's what happens when they get easy looks, you know? But because they haven't been able to get a lot of runouts, because again, Louisville has driven the ball and most of the rebounds has been done in the paint. And an offensive foul. Huntley Hatfield just picked up his second. <laughs> Now, Coach, this is the first made three of the game. I tell you what, Bazzilli does a good job on the pick and pop, and Virginia Tech is playing their style. Back over Louisville. Coach Perry Clark, I'm Roy Philpott. We mentioned Virginia beating Clemson earlier tonight in Charlottesville. Coach, that gives us a moment to reflect and certainly extend our deepest condolences to our friends in Charlottesville after learning the news Sunday night, the passing of the great Terry Holland, the former Davidson basketball player led Virginia of course as a head basketball coach for 16 years took the Wahoos to the final four twice and then later as an athletic director I mean one of the all time greats in the conference you know, I grew up watching him as a basketball coach and those great teams with Ralph Sampson and so many great players that uh, matriculated through Charlottesville VA and where well, the news was stunning when we found out about it. I know that you knew Coach pretty well, didn't you? Yeah, um, I met him in 1981. I interviewed for a job there uh, before I went on to Georgia Tech. 
and uh, we became friends and just an outstanding coach and a better person as far as even back then with diversity and understanding and trying to make Virginia more progressive in a lot of ways and he had a great staff with Craig Littlepage and the great Jim Laranega was a youngster back then and here's a little thing they used to play softball when I came in my interview, I had to go watch him play softball wow. and all like that. And they thought they were pretty good softball players, but it was a very close-knit staff, a very close-knit community. And uh, Terry did so much for the growth of the ACC and his competitiveness, uh, his diversity, his understanding. And it, he was just a forerunner and then ultimately became an administrator. So it's a tremendous sad day for um, the, the league and he meant so much to so many people. Ellis, the three-point play, his first bucket. It was 24 per game the last five. Couture made a three a moment ago. That was the second triple by the Hokies in the last two minutes. Bazzilli inside, a nifty finish. And that's where the spacing of Virginia Tech gets to be really effective. They're really good when Mutz can pass the basketballs, Bazzilli can move around, and they can space them with three really good shooters. Hokies lead by nine. That's a three by James. Trainer tried to save it, could not. Louisville cannot fall in the trap of chasing threes. I think they have to continue, even though they're behind, they have to continue to try to get the ball inside. Deep three, Bazzelli all net, and just like that, he scored eight. The largest lead for the Hokies and a timeout called by Kenny Payne. Yeah, Kenny Payne saw that what they were doing was not gonna lead them to success, so he does what good coaches do. Timeout. Back at 30. Now with their largest lead, and uh, Bazzilli and Couture getting it done so far, and really bulk of that production coming here in the last three minutes, Coach. Yeah, and a lot of it, again, has to do with Virginia Tech stretching the floor. Their concepts and how they move the ball and their skill set are the things that make this team really special, I think. Ellis bottled up. Shot clock under 10. Mari lands the step back. Trainer. Mike James. A couple of pump fakes. And off the glass it drops. But th this is this is where Louisville has really improved. They take the timeout because they go away from what they're doing. After the timeout, they come right back and they execute attacking the basket, getting in the paint. That's why this team has gotten better over the course of the year. Wide open look, Rodney Rice buries it. And that's what he can do. He is a really good shooter, but also a very smart player. Hokies have made four of their last five from distance. Mike James! Strong finish. Again, Louisville, they're much better when they're slicing and attacking the basket as opposed to chasing threes. That's the biggest difference, and that's the biggest growth in this team. High ball screen for Padula. Oh, sweet pass. Mutz couldn't finish. Here comes Ellis. Mid-range for Lance is there. And Kamari Lance, the freshman out of Indy. See, early in the year, he would have just shot the three. He took his time. He understands what Coach Payne wants. He attacked the basket. Louisville fans in attendance here on senior night. Trying to provide a spark. Bazzelli, double teamed on the block, gets it back up and in. He's got 10. He's tough. You know, that was a great isolation. They removed the weak side help and got the ball inside. James against Padula, bowls him over, smash mouth basketball. Louisville has found a way to play that allows them to have a level of success. One of the things coming into the season, this Louisville team was very inexperienced. They didn't have the experience of a lot of teams. They have grown over the course of the season. Padula off the mark. 
Lance thought about it. You mentioned that a few minutes ago. His patience there. Yeah. Coach Payne, they're going to add some pieces. They'll get, uh, you know, better talent. And as, as this thing grows, but he's got them playing in a system where they can have some success. We'll step aside. Less than three to go in the first half. Hokies by nine. Along our condolences to Virginia, the late Terry Holland. We found out about his passing Sunday night. You told me during the break you got one Terry Holland story you wanted Terry to share. I got a quick Terry Holland story. We were recruiting Brian Stitt. Only Georgia Tech and Virginia really knew how good he was. On a Saturday night, he came in on Friday. We got a basketball game with the Hawks that we're taking him to. And all of a sudden, his mom and dad show up. And they show up at the game. And after the game, they take him home. <laughs> and so he didn't spend Saturday night and everything. They just said they were missing him. I saw it, and they winds up signing that Virginia. I saw Terry later that summer. I said, I know you didn't have anything to do with the stitch showing up and taking him out of there. He said, Perry, do you think I was going to let him spend the whole 48 hours with you and Crimmins in, in Atlanta? <laughs> uh, he went up to you that time, uh, Coach. He got I, you. But he was, he was an ultimate competitor. He was a great guy. And I tell you what he did. He raised the level of play in the ACC, getting or keeping Ralph Sampson in Virginia at that time. He was being recruited by everybody and uh, keeping Ralph there, not only keeping him there, but keeping him there all those years and everything really just changed the dynamic of the ACC. And it certainly did. The foul was called on Wheeler. That's his first. A couple of free throws by Collins, and the Hokies back in front by 11. This same Louisville team will be in Charlottesville coming up Saturday to Eastern on ESPN2. Well, the great 30 for 30 survive in advance and listening to Ralph Sampson talk about what it was like in those days playing the ACC. And each and every summer, Red Arbach from the uh, Boston Celtics would show up at his house and say, Ralph, we want to draft you number one. No, sir, I'm going back to Virginia. I've got unfinished business. I thought it was a great interview that they did with him reflecting on his time in Charlottesville. But Ralph Sampson at 7 4 who could move the way he could. We hadn't seen anybody like that at that point in time, had we? No, I used to say back then there were guys that only God could stop. And uh, we don't see a whole lot of those guys like that. Can you imagine Worthy and Jordan and Sampson and Baez? And I mean, the league was just absolutely loaded and Tim Duncan and I mean that kind of talent and everything. But I tell you what, right now I just think teams that execute and are able to win off of their team concept and execution have an advantage. That's why I think this Virginia Tech team has a chance, a real good chance in the ACC tournament because they do do such a great job with their execution and their style of play. Cards have made their last five field goals. Lead is at nine. Tech is led by as many as 13 at 28 to 15, in fact, in this first half. And we used to have some recruiting wars now. It was fun. I mean, everybody knew who everybody was recruiting and everything. Well, your Georgia Tech teams, I mean, you, you recruited Dennis Scott, Brian Oliver, Kenny Anderson coming in that pipeline in New York City back in the day. It, you know, we got Tommy Hammonds who played about 10 years in the NBA. It came down to us and Wake. And that was interesting in recruiting because we both didn't know where he was going to go. And we're both sitting around Crestview, Florida, trying to, for him to make a decision. Ellis for three. Tip in. No, and the foul called on much over the back. This is where I think Virginia Tech is going to have to work and do a better job rebounding the basketball and being more physical on their blockouts. They've given up a lot of second shots to Louisville and as they get into the tournament to make their run they're going to have to be able to handle their defensive glass. Jalen Withers 77 percent at the strike. Get one more scoreless so far tonight but he's been pretty solid the last 15 games or so nine times in double digits. Averaging about six rebounds per game over the course of that same time span. 0 for 2 here, the rebound. And a sweet dish over to Trainer. Well, Wheeler snuck around, grabbed the board, then dropped the dime for the two. A 
One of the cards hanging around, trailing only by seven, approaching a minute to go. Couture, no, Mutz on the offensive glass. Mazzilli up and in. Boy, some great passing by the bigs for both sides. Well, that's what Mutz does. He's really skilled. I mean, whether or not he's a three or a four, his skill set is really good. He can turn, face, pass, drive. I mean, let's look at it from both sides because first it was Wheeler, then it was Mutz. Yeah, right there you saw quick pass right there, great finish. And now you see Mutz giving it to Bazzelli. But you see how well they play off of each other, and that's one of the things that this Virginia Tech team really does. But again, I'm really impressed with Louisville, their competitiveness on the glass. But more important, Roy, is their understanding how they want to play. I mean, I think you can look at a team and you can see what it is they're trying to do. You know, when I used to coach, I used to tell my team, if somebody's looking at you, they ought to at least have an understanding of what we practiced. <laughs> <laughs> I said, if they're looking at you and have no clue what we practice, then I've probably done a pretty bad job. <laughs> so at least you understand what Louisville is trying to do, and this is why they, I think they've gotten better over the course of the season. Cards with two conference wins. Mike James operating again on Couture. Check that on Padula. James will get it back. Pump fake. Muscles it up and in. One of the foul call didn't get it. James in double figures. He's got 12 points in the first half. He's attacking the basket. He's big, he's strong. He's using his athleticism to finish. James with 12. Zilly with 12 for the Hokies. Well, Tech may try to go two for one. Instead, they get the long three. Now they can perhaps play for that final shot, about a two-second differential between the clocks. Mike Young is talking to officials, coaching his team, talking to his staff. He's got a lot happening. Uh, that's when you're a heck of a coach. Padula to Mutz. Mutz was shoved. Shoved hard. He'll shoot two. And he gets the call at the end of it that he wants. That's a heck of a coaching <laughs> job right there on that possession. Second personal on Roosevelt Wheeler. Mutz, you see there, just one board away from a thousand. That's a lot of rebounds. It's a lot of glass cleaning. It is, and he's a very talented player, and is so instrumental in what Virginia Tech wants to and how they want to play. Mutz, 62 percent at the strike. Try to make it a nine-point advantage. Cannot. Desperation Eve time. Kamari lands. 35 27, our score at the break. Mike James with 12. Grant Bazzilli with 12 to pace the Hokies. Here on senior night at the Yum Center. Cards trying to go out. It's said that a lot of times being done because there's a lot of different ways you can do that. You can do that by cutting practice back some. Some coaches believe you got to go harder now. Um, and you got to just make sure. I think you have to really execute the things that you feel are allows you to have success. Hokies have it first in the road whites. Couture for three. No. And smacked out of bounds. It'll stay on this end. See, that's the type of execution that Virginia Tech does. Mike Young is great drawing up plays to get guys open looks, but now Virginia Tech needs to start knocking down those open looks that they get. Well, Justin Mutz has now reached the 1,000 rebound barrier. Needed six tonight, he has achieved that. And Couture grabbing his left ankle, that is not what you want to see No, in clear pain. It looks like he was trying to make a cut and normally in traffic, I didn't see exactly what happens. A lot of times you step on somebody's foot. Missed four games earlier in the season. At least good to see him put a little pressure on yeah. it and walk under his own power, even if it's wincing somewhat.
normally with me, with my players, when they were in pain right away, it normally wasn't that serious. When they seemed to be okay and kept saying they were okay, and we took them back, it was a lot more serious. So hopefully that's not very serious. Hunter Couture back to the locker room. Basile triple team, turns it over. Here's Kamari Lance. Lance effective in the first half, had four points. Two of three from the floor for the freshman. Just underway here in our second half. Cards trailing by eight. Their first possession. Now, Justin Mutz, we talked about his vision. We mentioned now the rebounding. Second active player, D1, with 1,000 points, 1,000 boards, 400 dimes in a career. Very impressive. Well, he is, and I think the way they're able to utilize him because he can play inside, outside, and his versatility makes this Virginia Tech team a really difficult team to play. Coach, you want to see L. Ellis get more involved, maybe launch a couple of deep threes, try to find a rhythm? Only if he gets them wide open in transition. I really do like the way that this Louisville team is playing and how they're trying to attack because they're not turning it over. They're putting pressure on Virginia Tech at the rim. I think if they start shooting threes, I think that, that could, they can shoot themselves out of the game. Cards 0 for 8 from downtown to start tonight, too. Last game in which they did not make a three was 2015 against Pittsburgh, game that they ironically won. Silly misses from point blank range. Well, scoreless here in our first 90 seconds to start the second. You know, I think early, I think Ellis felt the need to have to score every basket. And I think he put a lot of pressure on himself. Good defense by Mutz. A couple of blocks. Hokies get it back. You know, Sidney Curry had nowhere to go with those two shots. Well, Curry has to use his body to create angles. He's not going to jump over anybody. But Dula jumps over his defender and the sophomore out of Edmond, Oklahoma. First points in the second half for either side. Ellis hit the deck and a foul called. Skator was back, back on the field, yeah. or back on the floor, excuse me. Yeah. Re-injured perhaps that same left ankle again. Again, though, I'm telling you, when normally when they're in pain, they wind up being able to play through it is when they think that they're all right. Coach, he snuck back on the floor. <laughs> He's moving around pretty good on it right now. We all kind of held our breath there for a moment. Yeah, he's very, very important. They can't afford for him to miss games. Trainer tied up by Mutz. Stays with the cards. See, I think Lance can drive it. I think that um, if James can drive it, I think Ellis can drive it. But I, I, I think they're the only guys that can really beat guys off the dribble that Louisville has. Hokies attacking the paint again. A good look, Mutz gets it back up and in. Lead is back to 12. Ellis attacking. And that one will drop. He's got five. And, you know, but he's playing a really good floor game. And he's, he's given his team a chance to win by distributing the basketball and not turning it over. Cards just three total assists tonight on 14 makes from the floor. Lead is at 10. Virginia Tech has not won at Louisville since 1991. It's been a while. Collins open. Cardinals get it back. That was Trader. Correct me if I'm wrong, Coach. 91, I'm thinking about the old Metro <laughs> Conference days. That's the long, yes, it was. Spin by Ellis. And the teardrop is in and out. And Couture back outside. MJ Collins, well, he was in the air forever. A late whistle and a foul call. That'll put two and white in the strike. Virginia Tech's got a guy on their bench, Ace Custis, that I might have been playing on that team that won here because that's when they were pretty good. There you see the drive 
And again, it looks like all ball right there. That's a tough call. That's a clean block. That, that, that's, that's a tough call. Trainer picks up his first. Collins at the line, 73%. Lynn Kidd back on the floor for the Hokies. Yeah, and that's one of the things that they hope with Kidd, he gives them a more physical presence. I think Coach Young understands as you get into the tournament, you got to have some physicality in the low post area. Mutz really doesn't give you that because that's not really what he does. Uh, so he's got to use Kidd, I think, to come in and be kind of a space eater and give him some physicality in the post. Hokies do not win the ACC tournament. You have to think that they would be a prime candidate to get into the NIT and maybe host a game or two in the NIT. Not ideal by any stretch, but you don't want your season to end without any postseason. Kid the rebound. Hokies have been a mainstay postseason play. Go back to Buzz Williams, now Texas A&M. Great job that Mike Young has done. His team has been more than competitive since his arrival. And a foul call gets us to our first media timeout. Okie's trying to seize control. Guys go to the same barbershop. And so they would go to the barbershop and they had to hear it. And it's really a competitive thing and it's a real rivalry. And I think real is a bit of an understatement. Fabio Basili checking in and he connects 11 in red. His first points. Well, he averages 1.6 per game, his 15th game off the bench this season here tonight and perhaps a spark that head coach Kenny Payne is in search of. Lead down to 10, five minutes into the second half. Kid inside patience. See, he's got to finish that. Yeah. That's what Virginia Tech needs. They need a big inside that can finish that. That will open up more shot opportunities for their guards on the perimeter. Mike James had 12 in the first half, has yet cracked the scoring column in the second. That should change here. Two free throws coming. James has just been relentless in attacking the basket. One of the things that Louisville wanted to do was give Virginia Tech a lot of different looks and try to be disruptive to them offensively so they couldn't get any sort of offensive flow. Cardinals just one of five at the line tonight. First free throws of the evening for Mike James. 76% at the line this year. ACC Rookie of the Week back in January. After averaging almost 22 per. A couple of games against Syracuse and Wake Forest. LL is trying to get going tonight as well. Off to a bit of a slow start. At least by his standards recently. I think L. Ellis has an interesting decision to make in terms of next season. He's got a chance to come back if he chooses, but he was recognized on senior night tonight. You got to think that head coach Kenny Payne going to hit the portal pretty hard, especially in the backcourt. What would that mean for number three in red in his production next year after was 19 points per game this season? You look at the names on the walls here that have played here at Louisville. This program is going to get back to that level. The tour open, buries a three. And that's what he does real well. You look at this building, you look at the type of season they had. They have a great crowd. There's people in the suite in the suites. They love their basketball here. Uh, the history of this place. Uh, Louisville is going to be back. It's no question about that. This is a basketball mecca. You walk in the Yum Center, it feels like you're walking into an NBA arena. I've well, been here in a while. It's the first time I've been here in a couple of years tonight, and I was reminded of that very fact that, that they're serious about hoops here. With, with, it's no question about it, and uh, they understand basketball. They appreciate it, and uh, this city thrives on this, and Kenny Payne understands what this program means. 
He's rallying the troops, and this program is going to be back to the level that it's used to being at. Sean Padula gets Basile to spin short. James will track it down. We well, just wonder if the Cardinals have enough firepower to launch that run that's needed to really make this one close down the stretch. They've it, been close at times. And defensively, I think they've been pretty good. Again, trying to be able to score. And uh, James still attacking the basket. They've not done what they should do at the foul line. They've missed some several easy baskets. Uh, but at least they're attacking, and I think they're playing within themselves and not just shooting threes, because when they shoot threes, Virginia Tech can get a lot of run out, and that'll be able to stretch their lead. Ellis against Couture puts it up and in. See, he, he, Ellis is playing good basketball, and I think a lot of people early expected him to come down. They wanted to see him jack up threes and play at a pace that the rest of the Louisville team couldn't play at. And Tore that's why the they were turning over the ball so much. Right, but he's gotten better lately, right, Coach? Well, yes, because he's listening to a coach and he's playing for his coach and not the fans. Not always easy to do in this social media age that we live in. James left open. Boy, that would have been huge. That would have made it a two-possession game instead. Hokies get it. Zilly with 12. See, he just got to turn and shoot the ball o -o over the defender. He's bigger, he's stronger. But Zilly's not a guy that's going to back you down like that. Rodney Rice wide open. Basile has it down for Louisville. And a blocking foul called on Padula. That's his first. Hokies now with four team fouls, just two called on Louisville. Yeah, but, but Padula is so feisty. He, he is. got back there. He thought he took the charge and everything. But, you know, he's the ultimate point guard, and uh, he does such a great job for this Virginia Tech team. You can tell L. Ellis trying to generate some sort of spark, pop it right off numeral zero. And <laughs> Hunter Couture, I don't think, appreciated it. He'll save the possession. Yeah. Series dates back between these two to 1979. We mentioned those Metro Conference glory days in the 80s, early 90s, where conference realignment changed everything. Shot clock down to 10. Basile on Rice lobs it nearly out of bounds, saved by Trainer. He'll put it up and in right over Basile. All right, don't look now, the lead down to seven. Mike Young will draw up a play right now. Basile wide open. There it is. Money in the bank. <laughs> That's what Mike Young does. I'm telling you, nobody's better at drawing up plays. And just like that, the lead back to 10. Oh, they ran the set. Basile was wide open. Ellis. Slashing and slicing right to the rim. And that's a better mindset than him chasing threes. That's the type of offensive execution that will allow his team to win. This game's picked up a nice rhythm the last two minutes. And a turnover. Cardinals get it back. And he's looking at Basilia like, why did you pass the ball? Mike Young is saying, my God, that's not the way we grew it up. And we remind you, fans, to download the ACC Three Point Challenge app presented by New York Life to help benefit the local boys and girls club. Score points for your school. And after the tournament, the local boys and girls club will receive a donation from New York Life based on their affiliated ACC teams. Final ranking. The QR code is there right now. The threes are dropping for Mike Young and the Hokies tonight. They're 6 of 20 from deep. A lot of those coming here in the last 10 or 15 minutes of game time. Uh, Louisville so far decided not to participate in said challenge. Cards are 0 for 9 for behind the three-point arc. We'll see if that changes, Coach. Well, you know, I think they'll start to get some because they're really attacking the basket hard. 
But it's funny when you look at coaches and see coaches' reactions to certain plays, and you know that's not the way it was drawn up or the way it was executed. And that's what happened on that turnover. He's Perry Clark. I'm Roy Philpott. We've got just under 11 minutes to go in this one. Cardinals trying to spring the upset. Ellis puts it in. He's got 11. And number three in red starting to heat up. That's where he's off with tough. He's attacking the basket. He's taking good shots. You can feel pressure starting to shift a little bit towards the team in white. Big possession here, much high low. Seven to shoot. Again, what Virginia Tech is doing right now is they're spreading the floor. They're putting much on the perimeter and and they're trying to play with one post guy and being able to drive the basketball, but they've got to have a post presence. Couture off the screen. Quick trigger, no, Poteet the rebound. Outside to Rice. And a foul called on the floor. This one against the Cardinals. The lead at six. Withers just picked up his second. L. Ellis. Second half has been much more kind up to this point. Well, he's, he's being much more aggressive now. Tour again. This time it's all net. Boy, that release is quick. He just needs an inch to get that shot away. Yeah, but that was all drawn up by Mike Young. That was the isolation right there coming off the big. He faked like he was going over a cow cut and came back off the back screen. Ellis from downtown responds. First three of the night for the Cardinals. But he's doing it within the floor of the offense. You've been, you've been asking for that all night. It's coming. I like dumps and threes, you know? <laughs> I'm simple. Couture heard me. Couldn't get the shot off. Mutz the lob. I thought Mutz should have shot that. Here comes Ellis, one on three. Wise decision. Mike James bump. Mike James on the floor, no bucket. Now, I'm going to tell you, Virginia Tech does not play zone. And so they just keep coming at them. There you see Couture on a pop right there. And then Ellis comes right back. You see him attacking, and now obviously they got him backed off, and he knocks down a three. But Virginia Tech does not play zone, and so look for Louisville to continue to attack and try to get to the foul line. Trainer open for three. One possession game. JJ with a little deep sauce. Mike needs a Mike not needs a timeout. Virginia Tech needs a timeout. 50 to 47. The cards in the midst of a Look six at another ball run. Movement right there. Knock down the three. That's Louisville. And this team has some ability. He's got some talent. But Louisville's used to first round draft choices on their team. Kenny Payne's going to get them back to where they have first round draft choices. With this atmosphere, a team with this kind of record and this kind of support, they love Louisville basketball here. This will be a tremendous boost to the ACC when this place gets rocking and rolling like it can. I think I just saw Jack Harlow somewhere as well. Maybe that was a fat head in the stands. I'm not sure, but you get the picture. It's a three-point game. Louisville's in the midst of a 6-0 run. Cards have made their last five field goals. We got a ball game. Right now, it's important for Virginia Tech to get a good luck. They've got to go through one of their guards, Petula or Couture, to set up a play. Hokies trying to notch their seventh win in the ACC this season. Couture, double team. Couture couldn't finish, and a foul call. Who was it on? It's on Louisville, but they've been banging and bumping inside the whole game. Second on trainer. Mutz left wide open. That's a three. 25 in white. 
33 percent on the season that was money and that's what he does I'm telling you he's really skilled he's able to step away and he can do that because petite now is in the game as in the low post Ellis short one of the foul you know but he's got to keep playing that's what he used to do earlier in the season he didn't get a call but now he's just got to keep playing because he's going to get other opportunities Mutz attacking and Mutz was fouled so in a night where Justin Mutz recorded rebound number 1,000 to match 1,000 points in his career, 400 assists in his career, arguably he's hit the biggest shot of the night with that three moments ago, and now free throws coming after the under eight media time. In those first two days, and not having to play and with the double bye allows you not to put yourself in that situation. So I think it's extremely important. Well, you got Wake and Duke and NC State all playing that second day. Well, there's going to be some drama. You can feel it. You can feel it cooking here tonight. You can feel it cooking next week in Greensboro. You got Duke Carolina this weekend. Every possession matters. Every play is big. Mike James, just two points so far in the second, had 12 in the first half, and he wants it here. Gets Padula, James, left-handed, trying to spin it off the glass, and it was too strong. Yeah, he should have high jumped that. He should have gone one more hard dribble, high jumped, and put it on the top of the uh, white square. Boy, Mutz caught one right in the face, and he wants it back. Trainer on Bazzilli, and a foul call. That... That, that's a foul uh, Louisville doesn't need. Third on lands. A freshman out of Indianapolis. Remember the ESPN 100? My guy Paul Biancardi getting those rankings done all the time at such a high level. Shout out to coach. Hope you're watching tonight. Doing well. Mutz gets Withers. Mutz gets it back. Another rebound and another bucket. Another double-double, too. And that's just a breakdown on Louisville's part. They defended the first action and then didn't get the rebound. So that rebound and put back 11 points now, 10 boards for Justin Mutz. Under seven to go, the lead back to nine. It was three less than two minutes ago. James double-team. Tried to sneak it up and in, couldn't do it. And Bazzilli will slow it down. James, no one is challenging his shots. He's hesitating and double clutching when all he really needs to do is go straight up. Boy, Mutz in takeover mode. Hit the deck hard. Here's Ellis. Boy, you can see that three coming. And it touched the shot clock. Kenny Payne didn't like that sequence. No, but, but that's where he can take the three. Okay. In the transition, that gives him a better opportunity. No, give credit to the Hokies. Just getting loud. Timeout was called. One possession game since then, six straight points. Lowe was done a pretty good job on Vasily this second half and limited his touches. Patula, the dump off. Vasily was bumped. And James pushed him in the back. His first. And again, when. The guards are able to drive the basketball. It caused the defense to collapse. And both guards uh, have done, uh, Couture and, and Padula have done a good job of driving and dishing. Grant Bazzilli will shoot the one and one. Hokies in the bonus rest of the way. Coaches will always tell you guard play makes the difference. And, you know, there's Mike Young, and he's got good guards. They understand what he wants. They, they understand the concepts of his plays more than anything else. That's why they wind up getting good shots in critical situations. Another rebound for Mutz. He nearly turned it over. Padula retrieves it finally. How about the passing? Couture. Bazzilli with the bounce. That's the toughness. That's the mental toughness that this Virginia Tech team possesses. A 9-0 run by the Hokies. The lead back to 12. Mike Young loves it. The Hokies 
again asserting themselves. Grant Pazilli with 18. A couple of big buckets and a free throw here in the last two minutes after Louisville had tripped the deficit down to three. And here's the thing. It's not physical ability. It's mental toughness to be able to execute. Louisville had gotten the game in a really good situation. Virginia Tech's mental intensity to execute in the run what they wanted to run has allowed them to spread this lead further out. And this is the problem Louisville has had. They get close and all of a sudden they go two, three minutes and miss some easy shots, have defensive breakdowns. They have a turnover just like that and it cost them. That's mental, that's not physical. Turnovers haven't been that big of an issue, just nine tonight. Give the Cardinals credit, they were out rebounding Virginia Tech by 10 moments ago, but the Hokies now tied it up at 34 boards apiece. Mudd's patient and the flush, and a poster perhaps. But again, Virginia Tech right now, they're executing their plays excellently. Mudd's with 13 points, 11 boards. Three assists as well. He's done a little bit of everything. Hokies get it back. MJ Collins will hand it off to Padula once again. They're going to melt the clock. They're going to take their time. They're going to get the shot that they want. The Hokies needed this win. It looks like they're on their way. Padula making a 14-0 run in the last four-plus minutes. And the lead swells to 17, the largest of the night. You want to know how the league goes from three and spreads itself mental mistakes. Elbow jumpers there for Withers. That'll stop the run. More than four minutes without a point. Virginia Tech will execute every time down. The ball will touch Couture's hands, Petula's hands, as far as initiating and getting a good look. They play through those guys. And those guys set up everybody else. And for just tuning in, Hunter Couture went out for about 20 seconds in the first half. What appeared to be a lower leg injury looked a lot worse than what it actually was. He snuck back on the court for the next media timeout. Appears to be okay. Petula <laughs> is quite nice. A couple of quick deep threes. You, those two guys. They were joined at birth. They play so well together. They understand what coach is trying to do. When he calls a play, he knows they know what options that he's looking for. It's nice to have guards that understand you as a coach and can step up and make buckets when you need them as Petula is sending Virginia Tech on a winning moment of tonight's game. Well, if a little Justin Bunch is good, more is better. Went over the 1,000 rebounding mark tonight. And a couple of big time plays, including right in the grill, uh, Brandon Huntley Hatfield moments ago. In a critical moment in this game, get your biscuits ready for 25 in white. He got it done tonight, coach. He did. When they needed him, he stepped up. Another double double. I believe that is his eighth of the season, if I read my note card correctly a few moments ago. Louisville out of the timeout, Ellis for three. And Mutz again has it. Well, the last time Cards won at Louisville, we mentioned the Metro Conference. You coached in the Metro. You were the two-time Metro Conference Coach of the Year back in the day at Tulane. Man, that's, that was a great basketball league, and you had these two teams a part of it. You had South Carolina. You had Florida State. You had Cincinnati. You had Southern Miss. And they said if Perry Clark could do that, we need to break this league up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they did about three years later. But there was some great basketball there. It really was. Uh, Especially Bobby in the Huggins, 80s. But Bobby Huggins was just getting Cincinnati rolling. Uh, Bill Foster has done a great job at Virginia Tech. The Who else am I Larry, leaving the out great there? Larry Finch was at Memphis with, at Penny, Memphis Hardaway, State. with, with, with Penny Hardaway. And you didn't defeat Penny Hardaway. You just survived him. Elliot Perry with the, with the glasses, yeah. the goggles. Yes. He was a player. He was. A lot of players. But the thing that helped him prepare for that was being in the ACC and at Georgia Tech and having to go against 
All the different talent that you had. You had Muggsy Bogues at Wake. You had Lynn Baez at Maryland. Give me some love for crew. Adrian Branch at Maryland, too. Uh, I worked with him for a number of years. Great, I great guy. I coached him at DeMatha. That's right. You were an assistant uh, at DeMatha, uh, yes, right? Yes, indeed. I coached Mike Bray. Now Mike Bray in his final season at Notre Dame. Zilly claims a rebound under two minutes to go. Be a nice win for the Hokies tonight. They were tested. It was a three-point game about five minutes ago. And inside to MJ Collins. Yeah, certainly a tip of the hat to Mike Bray as he now is coming down the stretch in his final couple of games in South Bend. Tremendous human being. Dish inside. Mercy Miller. Sam Payne on the floor, son of the head coach. Good to see here on senior night as well for Louisville. 23 in red. Approaching a minute to go. Yeah, the demise of the Metro Conference was unfortunate for us that grew up in the South watching all those games in the 80s and watching what Louisville was able to do and winning championships, building a superpower in college hoops. Well, the pain, the last second block with a foul. Well, Denny Crum is a very, very special man. I mean, he did so much for college basketball when I came in and he dominated this league and uh, you know he never ever uh, did anything but be gracious and uh, I've got so much respect for him and what he did with this Louisville program. I'm just telling you this was this place was a monster. You used to get off the airport and Freedom go Hall. to Freedom Hall and I'm just talking about it was massive and uh, you know, Daryl Griffin and Jerry Eaves and Purvis Ellison and uh, I mean they had some horses. Denny Crum. I remember those teams. I remember the run in 86. They used to call him Cool Hand Luke. He never sweated. He had two big police. There's Milt Wagner. He had two policemen that used to walk behind him all the time. And uh, you know it, 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 it was an event. I'm telling you. Well, I just remember 1986 and the run the Cardinals made that year. Purvis Ellison, Coach Payne, of course, was a part of that group. That's when I first started following college basketball, and it was Louisville Duke in that championship, and so many great memories from that stretch. And obviously, even before that, with other championships run, championship runs rather made by this program. And I'm with you. It, they care about it too much here. He's too good of a coach and recruiter. I think that's been proven across multiple levels for this not to work, for this not to bounce back and come back. Now it's just a very, very special place, and uh, you know, and the players still live here. Everybody that went to Louisville, they still live here. But that shows you the type of community that this is, and how embracive it is uh, to this team, and uh, how much support they give. And with that being said, still a big win for Virginia Tech. It'll be the 17th of the season, seventh win in the ACC. And the Hokies will get Florida State at Castle Coliseum this weekend. Will so that be rocking? <laughs> pretty important game there. And just to try to keep momentum going after this dub on the road, before you head to Greensboro, Ward off with a three. He'll get it back. Could be the final possession for Tech and swatted out of bounds by Wheeler. Right, look, the Hokies survived this one. Let's call it what it was. It was a three-point game with five and a half minutes to go. They closed strong, which is what they needed to do today. Find a way to get the win. You move on. Try to close out the regular season Saturday at home. Yes, but they did that by executing, and that's the thing that's going to allow them to have success in the ACC tournament is their ability to execute. John Camden with a miss. Shot clock is off. And that should just about do it. Percy Miller. And the Hokies get it done. 71-54, our final score. Mike Young says that'll do it. And he'll shake hands with Kenny Payne in midcourt. Carts fall to 426-2-17 in the ACC. One more game left as well for Louisville. It'll be a road trip to Virginia coming up Saturday on ESPN2. Coach, this has been fun. Enjoyed working with you. I'm telling you.